Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today to celebrate the release of the latest stamp and die of the month from Not Too Shabby. I hope you'll stick around, get a look at the stamps and dies, see what I'm going to create and find out how you can enter to win a $25 gift card to the online store. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, Not Too Shabby comes out with a brand new stamp and die of the month. Now when you subscribe, you can choose just the stamp or the stamp with coordinating dies. I will have a link to all of the information in my description box below so you can go check that out and get signed up. Later on during the process, I will tell you all about the celebratory hop, how you can go around, get lots of inspiration, and get entered to win a gift card to the online store. For now though, Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this month's stamp and dies. When this stamp and die set came in the mail to me, I was in love. I just love how the macarons have been turned into those cute little animals. Now the one that I'm going to be using today is probably my favorite from the set, and that is the little catacorn macaron. I just love that and I'm going to do some kind of highlight or selective coloring and use a rainbow palette for my card. Now as I add any more products or tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I got started today by stamping the Catacorn Macaron onto a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. And because I will be using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to color it, I'm going to be using VersaFine Onyx Black. Because the paper has a texture and this is a new stamp, I did ink it up and stamp it twice. Now I could have let this sit for a while to make sure it was dry, but I did go ahead and bring in my heat tool and I was on there for maybe 10 seconds just to ensure the ink was all dry. I chose a rainbow of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. I will list all of the numbers in the description box below. And today, instead of blending the color out with the colorless blender like I usually do, I will be using the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen. I will be coloring the filling and the horn with that rainbow of colors. I'm going to start with the red, and this just has a couple small areas. I place the red down where I want the shadows and blend it out to the rest of the area with that Spectrum Noir pen. I also will be coloring a tuft of hair with the red just so I have the rainbow on the filling and up on the horn. While I continue to color the image, I thought it would be a great time to tell you all about today's hop and giveaway. There are going to be a few of us not too shabby design team members sharing projects today on our YouTube channels. What you'll want to do is hop through all of those, make sure to give them a thumbs up, leave them some love, subscribe if you're not already, and then when you've seen everybody's video, you're going to enter your information into the raffle copter for the giveaway. Now this is a hashtag driven hop, so you can find the hashtag in the title and in the description box. I also have it up on screen now if you just want to type it into your YouTube search. You have until January 14th to hop along and enter and the winner will be announced on the Not Too Shabby channel. Good luck! Music 
Now I'm going to be stamping a background for my stamped image. For this, I'm going to use a rainbow of ink cubes along with a splatter background stamp that I have. This is just on a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now because I want the background stamp to hang off the edges, I did add a little adhesive to the back of my cardstock before setting up my stamp. And then when I go to ink it up, what I'm gonna do is use the different colors and put like three to four areas of each color kind of in a triangle. Now you'll notice there my red is stained in three areas, but it does not come off on any of the stamped images or on the ink pads, but I do go ahead and just try to keep my red concentrated there. Once I have all the colors on the stamp, I am going to flip that over onto the cardstock, use my presser tool, and here's a look at that quick, easy, splattered background. Next, I die cut my image with the coordinating dies, and I have to tell you, I just love how Not Too Shabby sends the little magnetic piece with their dies. It helps me keep them all in place later. I brought in just a couple pieces of removable tape to hold my die in place while I cut it out. For this sentiment, I decided to go with You Make Me Happy. I thought this was pretty versatile. It could be used for many different recipients. And this little catacorn makes me happy, so it goes well with the image. I played a little bit with the placement of my kitty corn and with the sentiment, and then I inked it up and stamped it twice with the VersaFine Onyx Black after I ensured it was as straight across as it could be. Off camera, I used a couple different nesting rectangles to cut down my splattered piece and a scrap of black cardstock for a mat. Now all of the pieces were ready so I could start assembling my card. The splattered piece got matted on that black and then I tried to decide on the card base. Originally I was going to use white, but there was just something off about it. So I brought in a red, and while I liked the color in the background, it still wasn't quite right. So I did spend some time off camera figuring it out, and finally decided on a piece of blue cardstock that matched one of the inks in the background, and I think this was definitely the winner. Let me know below which card base you would have used. The matted piece got adhered to the front center of that blue card base, and then to add a little dimension to the card, I did put a piece of foam tape on the back of my catacorn and pop that up right above the sentiment. To complete the card, you know that I wanted to add a little bling, so I brought in a confetti mix from my stash and added some pieces to the front. I did kind of a line of three in the upper left and then over kind of on the center right, with two of the pieces being tucked in behind the kitty corn a little bit, just peeking out. Once those were all in place, I decorated the inside just a little bit off camera, and here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the other stops on the hop by clicking on that hashtag in the title or description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.